Hallelujah. Holy Spirit, you are welcome in this place. Holy Spirit, you are welcome in this place. Hallelujah. Holy Spirit, you are welcome in this place. You are welcome in this place. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Good evening, saints. pleasure to be here this evening, amen. I have a short word for you here. It depends on how it goes. I don't have many scriptures, but that's okay, <laughs> amen. But um, I'll actually be sort of going over what my brother-in-law, Reverend Larry, stepped on a little bit this morning. <laughs> Uh, whether he realized that or not when he was spoke when he spoke um but what i felt led to bring forth tonight is um i feel a need to reinforce our servitude and we know how to serve the lord we know that we have to serve the lord um but what i mean by reinforcing our servitude is that I believe we have come to a place in God as a church, um, and no, not this church, I mean overall, that we've humbled ourselves to the point to where we want to wait until God tells us to do something. We wait for his voice. We wait for his command. But at the same time, we don't seek his command. And there's a difference between waiting for his command and seeking his command. Amen. And see, the importance is, while God told us to wait on him, how many knows that that term wait is a, I don't know if I want to say bipolar term, but it's a bi-meaning term, uh, multi-purpose term. While it can mean to physically wait for time, it also means to serve, like a waitor or waitress in a restaurant. And I feel we get hung up on the wait and time. <laughs> when we say we're waiting on the Lord. Now, it's good that we want to wait for the Lord's command. You know, I'm not downing that at all. Amen, because there are certain things you shouldn't do at all without the Lord being in it. <laughs> Amen. If you're trying to minister to someone, shut your mouth until you know God's speaking through you. Because if you that sounds a little bit harsh, but it's the word of God. The Bible tells us that when the word comes forth and it comes without spirit, what is it? A dead letter. So you're then killing at that point, amen, if, it, if you're bringing someone a dead letter. So wait for Holy Spirit to fill your mouth, amen. But at the same time, we get held up with our daily things, thinking, oh, I'm going to wait on the Lord. Well, see, God said to ask. Did he not? We get so hung up on the, well, God's going to speak when he wants me to do something. Or, you know, if God has a move, he's going to put an unction in me and he's going to cause me to move forward. And this is true that he does. But sometimes we have not because we ask not. And see, there comes a diff. See, this is why it's important that you bless your day and you start to begin to ask God to orchestrate your day. Now, we know we serve a God who loves to orchestrate our day. We know we serve a God who wants to bless our day. But do we ask? See, there's a difference. If you read, I don't know if you want to bring it up, Rosalind, um, the 23rd Psalm. We don't have to stay long on it. It's not many scriptures, so we can read through it real quick. But I'm pretty sure most of us know the 23rd Psalm. Amen. We'll be reading this out the NET, so it may be a little different from how you hear it. This is one of those Bible scriptures that's ingrained in your memory, especially if you're a church kid. <laughs> you know it from way back ago, amen? So it may sound a little different, but it's the same thing, amen? So it says, the Lord is my shepherd. I lack nothing, amen? He takes me to lush pastures. He leads me to what? Refreshing water. 
Amen. He restores my what? Strength. He leads me down the right paths for the sake of his reputation. Amen. Even when I must walk through the darkest valley, I what? Fear no danger, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff reassure me. Amen. You prepare a what? Feast before me in plain sight of who? My enemies. You refresh my head with oil. My cup is completely full. Amen. Surely your goodness and your faithfulness will what? Pursue me. So it goes after us. It pursues all my days, and I will live in the Lord's house for the rest of my life. Amen. Now, this por portrays and lays out very well how the Lord wants to bless our days. It says he created us to lie down in green pastures. He goes before us every day so much that he prepares a feast for us, not just an opportunity of victory, but a feast. <laughs> a feast in the presence of who? Our enemies. He loves us to this point where he wants to prepare our life for us. And you read other scriptures and it tells you the will of God is that we be in good health and prosper. Amen. And that he wants good for us. He wants to uplift us. He wants to heal us. He wants to encourage us. He wants us to be the victors, not the defeated. Amen. The head and not the tail. But this is where we get hung up on it. Amen. Surely your goodness and faithfulness will pursue me all my days, Lord. So I don't have to seek you. Well, that's not what the Bible says. Now, well, you say, Richard, you just read it right here. You're, it is saying that, so you're contradicting yourself. No, you're reading a part word because this is only one scripture out of the Bible. It's saying the nature of God, but how many knows, Rosalind, if you can go to the book of Matthew. I know you're busy with the baby. Maybe uh, we can get some help. The book of Matthew, chapter 7, and we'll start at verse 7. So we see he pursues us, but what else does the same word of God say? Because this is all one word. It's encapsulated in itself. It says, ask, does it say wait? No. no. <laughs> does it say you'll find it coincidentally? It says to ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and the door will be open for you. See, sometimes you have to knock. That it requires you to move forward to what seems like it's locked, what seems like it's shut, and go and knock on it and see if it'll open. But so many times we're waiting, sitting back, Saying, well, God, I don't see the opportunity. Well, knock. <laughs> well, God, I want to minister to people, but, you know, you, ha you, you have to be in it. I want you to be in it. Knock. <laughs> Do you understand the power of creating that opportunity? Now, it's God that brings the life. It's, it's God that brings the increase. But unless you're looking for that opportunity, unless you're knocking on doors, unless you're doing all you can, amen, to stir up something, it's right there. It's in the Bible. I'm not making this up. You have to knock. If you don't knock, will the door be opened? We have doors that are shut sometimes, saints. I don't know if we realize that or not because <laughs> it's not really taught in that manner. But there's doors that are knocked or that are shut that we have to knock on. Amen. But our God tells us when we knock on these doors, they will open. Now, that doesn't mean you can just knock on any door you want to and you say, oh, well, God's will is for me, so I can knock on any door I want and whatever I want. Well, that becomes your will. It's not knocking to satisfy you. Again, remember what we started with. We're reinforcing our servitude. It's knocking for God. God, this is something I want to do for you. God, this is something beneficial for your kingdom. God, I'm finding resistance. The devil's trying to stop me, but I don't care. I'm knocking that door down. Do you see the difference? So, because 
there is going to be resistance. We have to know as a servant of Christ, the world hates Christ. From the very moment he first came to the world in his flesh, what did they do? They crucified him. The very same people who were supposed to receive him hated him so much, they put him on the cross and let the convicted man go. And they, the innocent man, they said, no, put him on a cross and take his life. So, you know, if they hated him then, if you come in the name of Christ, and I don't have to preach this because you see it in the world. You just turn on the news. You, if you're in school, and if you participate in any, any kind of event that has worldly people in it, any kind of social group that has worldly people in it, you mention the name of Christ. You say God's name. You try to take a stand. <laughs> That's for God. What happens? You get opposition. So how can you have opposition and not expect to have to knock through some things? I see this is where we run into get problems because when we have this opposition, if, if we have that mindset of, well, I'm waiting for God, not every waiting for God is going to be an easy road. Right? That's why it's called the battle of faith or the test of faith, amen? It's an endurance battle, amen? It's a spiritual warfare, amen? You have to fight um, principalities or just spiritual forces around your everyday life at work and so forth. This is something we, occur, we interact with every day to some degree, whether you know it or not, amen? But the point is... As you move for Christ, it's not an easy road of butter. That just everything is silk smooth. <laughs> Amen. So you have to expect opposition. So best believe any opportunity the devil has as he's roaming around, he's going to try and cause you to run into some shut doors. What outcome God has expected for you, Satan himself is going to try to shut a door. Now, if you let him, he can keep that door shut. Because what does the Bible also tell us? That the devil has no power but what power we give him. Does that not mean we can give him the power, give him back the keys to keep those doors shut? God didn't say, I have opened the doors. He said, I gave you the keys. Now read that in scripture. <laughs> Amen. He has given us the power. That's why he went to hell and back, amen, that's why he went to the grave and back, he went back to the devil, took the keys that he took from us and returned them to us, now he said, now you go forth, you knock and it'll open, you seek, you find, you ask anything in my name and I will do it, these same things that you've seen me do, do these and greater, amen, so there comes a pushing forward, there comes a seeking process, amen, and this is what we're missing, amen? And we see how we get so um, misaligned with the book of Psalms where it paints a nice picture of lying in green pastures and just soaking in the blessings of God, amen? Now, while it's good to enjoy the rest of the Lord, it's not saying you're not going to do any labor because not doing any labor for God is backsliding, essentially. Now, if I can go to this point, think back to where Jesus talked to Peter. I know I'm bringing out a lot of scriptures without references, but that's okay. If you, if you want references, leave a comment in the comment section. We'll bring them to you. <laughs> like I said, I didn't have a lot of time for preparation. I have some, but not a lot. When Jesus was talking to Peter after he denied him three times and Peter felt bad, what did Jesus tell him? If you love me, Go feed my sheep. Amen. He didn't get it the first time. He repeated himself. Peter, do you love me? Yes, Lord. Then go feed my sheep. He still didn't get it. Peter, do you love me? Yes, Lord. Then go feed my sheep. In other words, he was trying to get him over his own insecurities to get back to doing what? Laboring for Christ. 
because this is what it's about. This is the commission he has given us. This is what was the purpose for his price that he paid on the cross was so that we can take and receive what power he has given us so that we can experience freedom and salvation through God, but so that we can also take that to those who need it. Don't just sit as a bump on the log holding it for yourself. God doesn't want you to sit in blessings and not do anything for anybody else. That's hoarding it and that's being selfish. God doesn't want you to come to heaven by yourself. He wants you to bring the masses with you because that was the purpose of the gift. He paid that price so that all who receive it may have it and have eternity with him. But what do we have to do? We have to take it and work with it. Amen. So that you can't, there can't be a sense of leaning back, so to say, or being a potato, a couch potato in the Lord. Amen. Sometimes we do get spiritually lazy. Amen. Or we get distracted with things. Amen. As this world does have a lot of obligations, as it does have a, a lot of things that could take our mind off of the kingdom of heaven, the kingdom of God, that doesn't give us the right or rather the excuse or justification to not seek these things. Amen. Because it tells us to seek. It tells us to knock and it tells us to ask. Amen. And that is the very purpose, actually, if you don't know that, that was the very purpose God created us, was for communication with him. Did you know that? God's original, that, that was God's original purpose for creating mankind was for fellowship. So how can we live a most justified life without any point of communication? <laughs> oh, well, I'm waiting to hear from God. Well, do you speak to God? <laughs> do you know that there are men in the Bible, men and women in the Bible who have communicated with God on behalf of other people? Where God's judgment, because of circumstance, because of what actions they have done, what choices they have made, were, was bringing on God's judgment as someone else came and intercepted, uh, interceded for them and said, God, if you could just find one person in this city, God, have you reconsidered this? And you see, time and time again, he what? He listens to them. Yes, they, he, they had a relationship with them, and that's what it's about. He said, if I can find, as the numbers that you live, if I could find, what was it, 50, I believe, was one of the numbers. Um, if I could find 50 people here who were just, I will withhold the wrath. I will withhold judgment. But he couldn't find any. The numbers changed time after time, and whatever was, um, that's the word I'm looking for, not proposed, but uh, requested, we'll say, I guess. Whatever uh, proposition for a number was brought forth, God, God took it. It said, if I could find this number, but guess what? He could not find it. But see, this is the power of communicating with God. <laughs> Our communications as Strong as God's will is, he works with us. And while he's not going to bend to your whim, he's open to communication. We can change the very actions of God, amen, if you're willing to communicate, amen. Meaning what he plans on doing, he can change because of what? Your request. Why? Because that's what he promised. Ask and you shall receive. If he wasn't already doing something, you could speak it forth. That's where it comes forth. Speak those things that are not as though they are, which is also a commandment. Amen. He didn't say he, we were going to sit still and watch him take the uh, make a way where there seems to be no way every time. He said, no, you speak to what's not and make it so. If it looks like it's not going to happen, hold on to my word and promise. Know that I will make a way. But on our end, because we have a part two, that's what we're missing. He said to speak to those things that are not as though they are so that you can use and utilize your faith and you can take a stand against what the devil's doing. Amen. You could take a stand against the affirmities my people are facing and speak forth the life I originally intended for them. You have that power to speak and create things. 
But you got to speak. You got to ask. Amen. And this is part of your servitude. If you don't know that your servitude to Christ is to bring forth his will and his kingdom on earth. Your kingdom be on earth as it is in heaven. This is our God's desire. This is why he paid the price with his son, sending his son, Jesus Christ. Amen. This is why he gifted us the power of the comforter. Amen. Of our of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I lost the other words, but <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. Amen. This is why he gave us um, the power we have through Holy Spirit. Amen. So we can operate in sp these spiritual things. Amen. And bring f let allow that life that is that river of living water to flow through us. Amen. But as we operate with it, it's not sitting back and letting him take the, the entire thing. Amen. It's working with him. And it, so you have to see it that way. If, when we're taking the back seat, we're expecting God to just use us without us having any involvement. Amen. But that's not what God set up. God set up a partnership or a covenant. Amen. So he says, I want to work with you as you work with me. That's why it says, tie your yoke to me. Now, the Bible doesn't exactly say that. That's paraphrasing. But what does it say? It says, my yoke is light and my yoke is easy. Well, what is a yoke? If you don't know, Yokes were equipment used on the farm animals and oxen at the time they had. They didn't have tractors back then to pull and till up the field. They had oxen where they would have a device which called a yoke that would rest on their shoulders and combine two more animals. So that instead of one animal doing all the work, it was the two carrying it. So in other words, God is saying, tie yourself to me and walk with me so that you walk the way, you walk the straight, you walk the narrow, but the weight is being carried by me. But I'm not dragging you. <laughs> You're walking with me. This is why you have to learn the walk of Christ. This is why we have to learn the, his word and how to function. If we didn't have to learn how to function, he could just do everything for us. But that's not why we have 66 chapters of the Bible. We have these 66 chapters so we can learn our God's will, learn our God's way, and learn to perform and operate as he wants us to. So we can be the actual ch children of Christ. Amen. Or, if you want to go that route, ambassadors of Christ. Amen. How can we be ambassadors if we don't know how to operate in his will? If we don't labor for him. Amen. So we see this picture. Amen. That we have to have a sense of what can I do. And that's what it boils down to. Taking the step, taking the time in your everyday life to not just wait to hear from God, but begin to ask him. And I spoke this before. If I had been on a Wednesday service, I'm sorry if you didn't get to hear it. But we can't live stream every service. But will we take the time to ask our God to bless our day. As soon as we wake up, say, God, first and foremost, thank you for waking me up this day. I have breath because of you, and I thank you for that. I thank you for another opportunity to spread your name and spread your word. And right now, Lord Jesus, I just ask that you order my footsteps. Allow me to shine your light and not mine. Allow me to be able to walk through doors. Allow, allow me to recognize the doors that you have. Give me the power. Give me the confidence. Give me the boldness to knock on what doors need knocked on, to open and turn what handles need to be turned, amen, and to bring forth your word. Give me the discernment to know where to go and how to operate in you. Take this time. Amen. Because, see, I feel like the concept sometimes is taken as, oh, this is like a premature thing of, you know, getting yourself to that humble state. But once you mature in Christ, well, you don't really need to do that anymore because you just do it automatically. Your heart is already looking for what God wants to do, so you don't take that time anymore. But that is such a skewed, unliving revelation. Because if you really want to look at it, the truth of the matter is, in the same way we wake up every day, and guess what we have to do? We have to what? Brush our teeth. 
When we wake up every day, we have to take our vitamins. We wake up, we may eat breakfast. We have our, the, our routines that gets our body going, gets us started so we can go and operate in our day as we need to. If we don't get our vitamins, we're not as nourished, amen? If we don't take what medicine we're supposed to, we may have deficiencies. If we don't brush our teeth, we're going to have some stanky breath, amen? <laughs> we got to brush our hair or else we look a mess. We have certain things we do to get our body so that it can function and be a part of this functioning world as it needs to be. Well, what is done in the spirit is you come before your God and you ask him to bless your day. You get your spirit ready in the same way you get your natural body ready. If you're not preparing your spirit body, you're not going to have any willingness to seek for these things. Amen. You have to make this an effort. Amen. And as you make this an effort, it then becomes what? A desire. And while that desire births, that doesn't mean you stop asking for these things because now you desire. It means you ask them more, right? You don't abandon brushing, brushing your teeth every morning because you have the most pearly white of teeth. That pearly white is there because of consistency, right? Not because of an earlier point in time. In other words, you stop brushing, they're going to start turning yellow, <laughs> right? If you stop preparing your spirit, What's going to happen? It's going to wither and get contaminated. <clears throat> it's going to get lazy because you stop asking for work. Now, how many knows? Now, this is more of a carnal um, example, but when you start to lay back, it's hard to get back up. Right? You sit down. You don't want to get back up. When your spirit starts to die down, when your spirit starts to relax, and now it's in need of revived. <laughs> That's why we say stir up the gifts. That's why we say keep your flame going. Work out your own salvation so that this doesn't happen. Amen. But it's so easy to do because, again, we get complacent or we get distracted with all the things of the world. We tend to accidentally neglect the things of the spirit. Amen. So we need to put that at the forefront. Amen. But it's getting back to the concept of not, you know, I don't want to leave it vague. It's getting back to the concept of asking what God has for you that day, asking him to lead your day. Because, see, there's two parts in that. You ask for the blessing for your day. Because, see, it says you have not because you ask not. So while the Lord wants to prepare your day, you still have to ask. Amen. And as you ask. You now have the petition to, for the Lord, sorry, there's a bug. You have the petition for the Lord to bless your day, but you also now have to have the what? Expectation. Because what is faith without works but dead? What is faith without, um, if it's not being the evidence of things not seen or the substance of things hoped for? If you don't see it, amen, you have faith, right? So if you ask the Lord to bless your day and you're not seeing it, what do you do? You hope for it. You expect it. That is faith. So if now I say that to say this, if you ask the Lord, taking that and applying it here, if you ask the Lord to bless your day, but you don't have faith in it, what is that but praying in vain? Are you seeing the concept here? I hope I'm making that clear. <laughs> Amen. So there comes an expectation with it as well, which is why we need to look for, amen, and see what our God is doing, amen. But we have to ask, amen. Ask and you shall receive, amen. So, Rosalind, if you can go to the book of John, uh, we'll go to chapter 16, verse 24. It says, until now, you have not asked for anything in my name. Ask, and you will receive it, so that your joy may be complete. So right now, you have some things being called out. <laughs> Amen. Until now, you have not asked any, for anything in my name. Now, in the context, it's not exactly addressing it in the manner I am right now. 
but I thought it was very befitting. I stumbled on this verse. I said, if that ain't the perfect scripture, <laughs> amen. But until now, you have not asked for anything. How many have, have of you, now I'm asking for audience participation here, how many of you have been quickened by the Holy Spirit for not asking, for not communicating, for not praying? I got a lot of ums and a lot of head shakes. I know because I've had it myself. <laughs> you go through this life, and if you stop communicating with who is your husband, what happens? Because we are the bride of Christ. That's when you commit yourself to him. Amen. Acknowledge him as your personal Lord and Savior. He starts to say, hey, you stop talking to me. <laughs> Amen. He starts to put a quick uh, uh, conviction in you. Where's your prayer time? Right? Or you didn't put, why are you not putting me first in the morning? You make everything else first. You check the news. You check the weather. You check your notifications, what text messages you got. You didn't even think about me yet. Now, how would we feel if our wife or husband did that to us? Right? Got out of bed, went to go turn on the TV, didn't even say good morning to us. Went to go eat breakfast, went to do all this stuff. And then an hour later, come back to the bed and say, oh, good morning. Well, at that point, they're probably not in the bed anymore. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> but you see the goofiness in that circumstance, or rather the, uh, yeah, well, I guess we'll say goofiness, weirdness, in that sense of relationship. Again, it's a relationship with Christ. Amen. And the, cl the more you do this, the closer you are with him. Amen. Because, again, you're reinforcing what relationship you have, which is re now in re reinforcing your servitude. Amen. So take these things. When, as soon as you get up in the morning, make it a day, make it a point that the Lord is going to lead your day. Make it a point that you're going to look for what he has for you. Amen. If he has spoken something, look for it. Expect it. Amen. But also be willing to ask for what God has not told you to pray for. Amen. Because that's where we get hung up on. Oh, well, I don't know if God wants me to pray for this. Is it for someone's good? Then ask. Is it according to my word? Which you should know. Then ask. God did not say, I will give you everything, and you just repeat me. He just says, ask. Amen. Now, if it's asking amiss, best believe he will let you know. <laughs> Amen. He will tell you, don't pray for this. Amen. And I've had that happen to me many times before. <laughs> amen. But you, that's, that's why it's important to be led by the Spirit. Amen. He will lead a, guide you and direct you, but don't turn humbleness into laziness. It's not sitting back and doing nothing. It's moving forward and being open to correction, being open to change of direction, and being open to leadings. Amen. But what he has told you, go forward and do. Amen. He has told you to go. Amen. Lay hands on the sick. He told you to minister the gospel. He told you to knock and the doors will open. Amen. He told you to be a ministering flame of the gospel. To take a stand. Amen. When other gods, other idols are being lifted up, he said to take a stand. Amen. Now, if there's moments where God wants you to not do something or go try something else. He will as long as you are open. But don't use laziness as an excuse. <laughs> well, I don't know what to do. Well, ask. Again, that was brought forth this morning as well. Don't be afraid if you don't know what to do. <laughs> That's why the Bible says, open your mouth and I will fill it. Ask. Amen. Let God lead you. See, we need to begin to start asking for things and ask with expectation. Amen? Because that's a lot of the problem, too. We don't expect the things we ask. What do you mean? Oh, well, God, thank you for blessing my day, even though this is a re uh, ritualistic prayer. I don't actually mean what I'm saying. Just, oh, Lord, bless my day, blah, blah, blah. Thank you, Jesus, and go. And then what do you start doing? You start complaining. You start looking at all the bad. <laughs> you start telling your coworker, yeah, it just, man, it's, uh, boy, I tell you. What is that doing? 
See, you're using the power of your throat, using the power of your voice to work against you rather than for you. Amen. God said the very power to create things or to speak things that are not as though they are is in our tongue. That's why he says to be careful of the tongue. Well, these same tongues with that same power, with that same fire can put petitions to the Lord. The same tongues. Are you hearing me now? Recognize the power of the tongue. Do you need something in your life? Ask for it. It doesn't say God might give it to you. It says ask and you shall receive. Do you understand the power in your voice? Do you start to ask God when you are without? This is the power God has given us. And until we begin to operate in it, the church is not going to function in this nation as it should. Oh, well, the government is raising things up against uh, our God. Okay, we'll do something about it. Do you put up petition? <laughs> do you keep in constant prayer? Amen. See, these are the things. And maybe there's a step beyond prayer. Because a lot of times there's a cause for action. Amen. That's that activation of faith. Faith without works is dead. You may not be the person in position, but maybe you could pray for the person in position. Lord, give them the strength. Give them the courage to continue to do what you need to do. Give them the strength to stand out in boldness against the crowd. Because best believe, in a world that's not for God, and if you don't know that this nation isn't for God, <laughs> you must be blind because I tell you what, you can see it everywhere. We still have it, thankfully, on our money, one nation under God. We still have it, you know, in so many things. But when I tell you the schools have taken prayer out, They've taken Bibles out. The, uh, what is it? I, I get the two mixed up. There's a national anthem and the Pledge of Allegiance. The Pledge of Allegiance, which used to be a daily thing for me in grade school, elementary school, there came a point where I recognized after a while, wait a minute, we don't do that anymore. Where in, the, in that Pledge of Allegiance, we would acknowledge God, and now that's taken out of the schools. Do you see the problem with our nation? Because we live in a world that rejects our God. And this nation is supposed to be the most free nation of all of them, where you can worship and serve God freely. Well, that just means they accept you, but anytime you try to take a stand to do something, what do they do? They want to kick you out. Right? Bring in uh, all the other false gods, bring in idols. But anytime God comes into the picture, there's a problem. This is the nation we're in. Amen. So but now that's just daily life. What you can experience. Exp imagine the people who are in the government, the people who are actually combating against the principalities that are trying to overrule this nation. Imagine this weight of the spotlight of the entire nation looking on you, whether or not you're going to submit to the devices of the devil and go with the status quo, go with the flow, or if you're going to be the nail that sticks out and stand for the God who is true and counters everything they say stand for. Best believe they need prayer for strength. So if you're not the one to cause action, pray for those who are because they need it. <laughs> Amen. But you got to do something. Amen. This is not an actionless um, servitude that we have for the Lord. Amen. It's not serving with nothing. It's serving with our entire being. Amen. It's putting forth action. It's going forward. Amen. It's asking. It's knocking on doors. Amen. It's going forth and laboring. Amen. And when we begin to labor, amen, we will see the will of God come forth. Amen. Because it brings the will of God forth in them. Amen. And it begins to open doors to where others could come in as well. Amen. But do you know, even in matters like that, oh, well, I don't see the souls coming in, the saints coming in like they should. Well, when did you stop asking? That's why we keep getting reminders uh, from Pastor Linda, like others. Pray that we get laborers. <laughs> Amen. This is a something we should need reminded of. Amen. This is something that should be asked of daily. Amen. Do we ask for labors? Amen. Do we ask God, send me the souls I can um, 
influence, send me the souls I can interact with that will be fruitful so that I, they're not just a come and go, but I can bring them in the church and they can be firmly rooted and firmly grow in this body. Amen. Yes, we want to minister to those whether they come here or not. We want to minister to those as they are fly by nights. Amen. And drop a little God in them so we can begin to plant, birth and grow. But we also what want to pray and ask for the increase of this church. Amen. Because churches don't function without bills being paid. Amen. And income doesn't come without the people here to give offering and tithe. Amen. Amen. We're not here for your money, but that's and you go to any business. It has funds. It has bills. Amen. And no, I'm not taking an offering, but I'm making the point. The more people you have, the easier it is. Now, God will always make a way. But the easier it is, laborers, you seem as I, well, you didn't see on live stream, but you heard me making a mention to my sister as she was running the scriptures. She had to tend to her baby and I had to wait for her to put the scriptures up. Well, he's a toddler now, two years old. <laughs> I guess that's the terrible twos they talk about, but <laughs> he's a blessed ape too, amen. <laughs> but you see, she has her hands full and she still had to take care of that. Well, why don't we have laborers for over there? So you see, we're in lack, amen? Now, when businesses are in lack, what do they do? They put out ads, amen? They go out and uh, hire recruiters to look for resumes on websites and so forth to see who can fit the position because they need and want to function. So what do they do? They petition. They ask, who wants to work here? They put up big signs, right? They work. They labor. Since when did the church stop laboring for souls? See, this is the importance. <laughs> this is the servitude God meant for us. Amen. This is what we have to do is we need to ask. Amen. We need to allow God to bless our day. We need him to lead us. But do we seek for these things? Do we seek to be used? Do we ask God, do something here? Amen. Because this is the power and the appointment he has given us, amen, is not to just hold this power to fight off things that come at you, but to go and do for me and cause my kingdom to come on earth as it is in heaven. This is the will of our God, amen. And if we don't utilize this power, then who's going to do it? Nothing's going to happen, amen. And we're going to continue to stay short staffed. We're going to continue, amen to see a nation that's falling away from God. Now, yes, the Bible says it's going to continue to wax worse and worse, but that doesn't give you the excuse to take the back burner and do nothing. Amen? Because our Bible also says that God will extend the time, or it says he will shorten the time for the uh, sake of the saints. Amen? But he also has a point set in time he's decided. Amen? Now, he also says he wants as many to come in as possible. Amen. So if we take the back burner and say, oh, well, this is supposed to happen. This is prophecy. You know, it's going to wax worse and worse. OK, well, yeah, I'm, you know, that I don't want to go against God's will. Well, it's going to wax worse and worse. But now you're not laboring. So you're not bringing in any souls. You're allowing the devil to have free reign. And you're making, even if you don't change the time frame of what God has and make it even shorter, Helping God in that sense, you're making it harder for you because even if God's time of revisiting the earth, coming back for rapture and coming back for victory, even if he doesn't change that based off of you doing nothing because you've allowed the enemy to take control of the government because you didn't take a stand. Guess what? Now the government you have to work under is now more restrictive. Now the churches don't have the freedom. Do you see the point? It's not OK to just sit back and do nothing, saints. You can't just use, use that as an excuse to just do nothing. Amen. Go forth. Ask. Begin to petition. Be ready. Be expecting warfare. Be expecting opposition because best believe you're going to get it. Amen. The devil roams around like a lion seeking whom he may devour. But that doesn't mean he has victory over you. Amen. God has given us victory. Jesus has given us victory. All we have to do is receive it and step forth in it and ask. Amen. Since when do we take a seat back when someone wants to defeat us? <clears throat> now, if I may, Brother Robert, I know 
growing up here in this church, you've told of many stories. People wanting to mess with the wrong guy. <laughs> they want to come up to you, uh, whether you're uh, trying to do work. <laughs> uh, you know, you even places where you're trying to do stuff for the church or whether you're doing uh, your, just your personal life uh, out in bad neighborhoods and people want to come, come up to the wrong man of God. Does he, do you just sit back and do nothing? No. Because if you just do nothing, <laughs> that's allowing them to do what they want to do. That's letting them have their way where they can beat you probably worse, maybe kill you. Right? If you go in the wrong neighborhood, they ain't, they're not going to care about how they leave you. They're just going to take what they want. Do we do this in the spirit? Again, the devil is roaming around seeking whom he made the vow. He's trying to do all he can to come against the will of God and the move of God. And if we do nothing then he's going to have his way. If I may say this, babies will be aborted, amen? God will be continue to be taken out of everything we have. You won't be able to go on TV and say the name of God or say the name of Christ unless it's in profanity without being cut off. Even if it's true, oh, well, it offended me. And saying it in vain didn't offend me? I mean, you have things so twisted, <laughs> And yet people wonder why things are the way they are. Yes, it gets worse and worse, but you have a lot of Christians not doing what they're supposed to be doing. That's why there's freedom to do this, because they didn't fight opposition. Don't be afraid to be that opposition. And I was spoken a little bit at the end of a morning service. Don't be afraid to bring that strong word. Don't be afraid to bring that correction or be that opposition that someone faces, because if you're going not in your name and going in the name of God, you don't carry that weight in the first place anyways. But when you have someone going against the will of God, best believe where something else, and the Bible tells us this too, but I don't know the scripture for you to pull it off, and we lost our Bible opener here, but that's okay. The Bible tells us when something lifts itself up against, not with, not for, but against the knowledge of our God, we are to what? Tear it down. That's a commandment as well. Amen. So how can we be OK with a world or a nation that's so going against our God, welcoming other religions, but turning ours away? Amen. The very Christianity the nation was founded on in whatever manner it was, whatever level of wisdom or revelation they had, it was Christianity. Amen. And we're going to turn away. And just be OK with it. Oh, we'll be loving of everybody. <laughs> that's a little political there, but that's okay, amen. I don't want to hold you guys too long, but I just want to stress the importance of not doing anything and, and reinforce the importance of doing, amen? Because, again, this is our lifestyle. This is our relationship with Christ. Is It's taking the power. We have been endued with power. And with this power, we have a responsibility. I know that sounds like a Spider-Man quote, but it's not. <laughs> it's biblical, if anything. <laughs> They're using just godly wisdom. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> they say with great power comes great responsibility in Spider-Man. <laughs> it's a Spider-Man quote. <laughs> but yes, when God, it, God tells you when you have something, he expects you to use it. That goes back to the talents. If you have a talent, which was some kind of currency, you don't do anything with it, the man just buried it. Guess what happened? He lost it because he didn't do anything with it. Don't just sit on the gifts God has given you. Take the authority. That means you come against. When you have authority, you come against. You cast down. You put in its place. Take the authority Christ has given you and speak to those things that are not as though they all are. Call forth the kingdom of God. Call down the kingdom of darkness and bring forth the will of God that needs to be. Amen. Hallelujah. I, I was checking to see if he brought up the scripture or not, but that's okay. But I guess we'll end it there. Um, but take that to heart, amen. As you go through this week, begin, see, when you start your day, thank him for giving you that day. But also take time and say, Lord, show me what you have for me this day. Open my eyes so that I may begin to see things that you want for me to do. 
And also, Lord, open my eyes so that I can see things that you're not okay with or things that you want to come forward. If you want something in someone's life, open my eyes that I may see it. If there's something going on and you don't want it, open my eyes so that I may see through your eyes, Lord Jesus, so that you be can begin to see the things in the kingdom of God, amen, and in the spiritual realm so you can begin to call forth those things. And when he begins to show you these things, ask for them, press for them, amen. Ask. Lord, give me wisdom. Give me revelation on how to win this person. Amen. Don't just wait for the wisdom to come. Ask for it. God, show me how to win this soul. Amen. God, show me which soul I can minister to to bring them into the church. Amen. Because this is what we have to do. Amen. Ask and you shall receive. Amen. Amen. So this is where we'll let you go on the live stream. We thank you for tuning in, but we'll go ahead and end it here. So we'll catch you next time. Love you and God bless. Amen. Thank you for tuning in to our stream. However, this brings a conclusion to our service. We would like to invite everyone to help us out by making any donations as you please, as they do help us to continue our ministry. If you would like to send a gift online, Donations can be made using the donate button at our website, faithtemplebg.org, or if you would prefer to send something in the mail, all checks or money orders can be written to Faith Temple and can be mailed to the address 175 State Street in Bowling Green, Ohio, zip code 43402. We really do appreciate any and all gifts sent in. We thank you for tuning in to our stream, and we hope to catch you on the next one. We love you, and God bless. Thank you.